Hi everyone, I wanted to open up today's abiding reflection with an entry from the devotional My Utmost for His Highest. It says, Am I building up the body of Christ or am I looking for my own personal development only? The essential thing is my personal relationship to Jesus Christ, that I may know Him. To fulfill God's design means entire abandonment to Him. Whenever I want things for myself, the relationship is distorted. It will be a humiliation to realize that I have not been concerned about realizing Jesus Christ, but only realizing what he has done for me. My goal must be God himself, not joy, nor peace, nor even blessing, but himself. Am I measuring my life by this standard or by anything less? It just got me thinking of the question as if Jesus asked it to me, why are you following me? Am I following him just out of my own selfish interest? Or am I following him because I believed that he would give me something that I expected him to? Oftentimes the Lord does something or asks us to follow him somewhere that we would have never expected him to call us to so that we can learn more of who he is and depend on him in a deeper way than we did before. He is always longing to bring us into a deeper relationship with himself. If we're only following him based on what he can provide us with or what he can give us, but then he doesn't give us those things that we were expecting, we're gonna end up disappointed. And we realize that we've placed our expectation in the wrong thing, in an outcome instead of in Jesus himself. Sometimes he allows us to experience these disappointments so that we can forsake and abandon our own expectations and follow him in sincerity with the only goal of knowing him. So am I following Jesus for what he has to offer, such as joy, peace, comfort, provision, or am I following him to know him? Because he's all that we'll ever need. Matthew 19:16 came to my mind when I read that devotional. And I wanted to read a part of it. In verse 16, Jesus says, Behold, a man came up to him saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And right there we see that he went to Jesus because he wanted something from Jesus. He wanted to know how he could receive eternal life. This rich young ruler had everything the world could offer but he didn't have the security of his eternal destination. And then verse 17 says, Jesus said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. And he said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the young man said to him, All these I have kept, what do I still lack? And Jesus said to him, If you would be perfect, go, sell what you possess, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And when I read that, I think of so many people that have believed a false gospel, like the prosperity gospel, promising them treasures on earth. When in reality, the true gospel, Jesus tells us to go and sell everything that we possess and give to the poor so that we might have treasure in heaven and to follow him. Following him means abandoning all those things. Jesus tells him exactly what he needed to do to inherit eternal life, but it wasn't what he expected. He wasn't willing to do what was required and what Jesus invited him to do. He had things that he valued more than eternal life. He wanted to follow Jesus for what he could gain, but he didn't want to lose anything in the process. And as you know, when we choose to follow Jesus, it is always going to cost us something, and we must count the cost. When we choose to follow Jesus, it means that we will lose things in the process. When you look back a couple chapters in Matthew 16, I think of what Jesus tells his disciples in verse 24. He says, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. 
For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? And I see the rich young ruler in this story. We see that he was a man who had gained the whole world. He had everything that the world had to offer. And yet he lost his own soul. So I ask myself the question, why do I hold on to so many things that are temporary that I'm going to lose in the end if Jesus is the only thing that is going to matter? When I come to the end of my days, I'm only going to be concerned with what I did with Jesus' invitation to follow him. All that matters now is that we lose our lives so we can gain everything in the end. And Jesus is everything. There's nothing that I could lose here on earth that will ever compare with the glory and the joy of knowing him and spending eternity with him. So I pray that that encourages you, no matter what you're facing, no matter what it feels like you're losing today, no matter what challenges or struggles you're facing or trials, that you would look at Jesus as the hymn says, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Love you all, and I pray this encouraged you today.